Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be a part of the conference. I would like to tell you a story about understanding, as this work can be understood the best through our voices and our life stories. Since I was a child, my family has been trying to understand the world through traveling. We visited lots of beautiful places, met lots of wonderful and not so wonderful people, felt like we were citizens of the world. We thought the world was united and every one of us was related. It seems I was mistaken. Perhaps every Ukrainian war story starts on the 21st of February at 5 a.m. And you know, I'm from a small town, Balaklia, which is in the Kharkiv region, and I know perfectly well how explosions sound. Since there was a detonation of the arsenal in my town in 2017, and the next year, and the next one actually, so I heard an explosion at 5 a.m. in 2022. I thought it was hallucinating or something, though I wasn't. My friend who lived near the arsenal called me and screamed to wake up, we are bombed and the war has started. I understood that the hell in the face of the full-scale invasion of Russian forces had come. It wasn't a surprise. After Vladimir Putin recognized so-called DPR and LPR, it was just an understanding of inevitability. There was an unsettled silence in Balaklia for two days. My family found out that there is a shelter in a kindergarten near us. And first time we used it on the 26th of February, when our arsenal was heavily bombed. And another time we came there because of mom's panic after hearing just another air raid siren. I didn't understand why we had to rush if probably Haki was under attack. I got it when I heard a whistle right about me, an explosion and the sound and feeling of windows shattering right in front of me. In a day Russian occupied Balaklia and sitting in the shelter I understood I would rather die than live under Russia. This thought was with me when I was in Balaklia and actually this thought is still in my head. My parents are doctors and my father had to go to work so we came with him and we stayed in the hospital for more than three weeks. We thought it would be safer although we quickly understood it wasn't. In a few days the occupiers brought a multiple launch rocket system and different kinds of artillery on the hospital territory and we were their shield. We had fighters every single evening Fighters which were dropping bombs on our people due to the open sky and we were afraid of the evening as the darkness came. We were not allowed to turn on the lights since the Russians were notified that they would shoot us. And you know, psychology says that peaks of emotional stress come on 5th, 12th and 21st days and we gave up the idea of not leaving Balaklia on the 22nd. And I'm happy we did, as my town is still occupied and every day the situation gets worse. More people, including our family's friends, are being kidnapped and killed. A few days ago, FSB came to the hospital and tried to force the doctors to work for them from Russia. Doctors refused and the game of catch up with guns and shooting has begun. And people were ready to die. But... Do you know what was and actually is the scariest feeling during the war? The feeling that the world has abandoned you. For the person who thought that the world was united and supporting, this is hell and this keeps me up at night even when sirens are silent for a few hours. This is hell to see our people dying and being tortured while Russia's parades all around Europe and the world are being held and secured by police. This is how to realize that Ukrainians are not safe from the Ruski Mir, even abroad, and when sanctions were not provided, when there were only concerns, when there were no weapons, no ammunition, no actions, let alone the cloud sky, then it occurred to Ukrainians that we are alone in the world, in the world which perhaps wants us to be defeated in 96 hours. So we fight not only for ourselves, but for the world and peace itself. And we are still so, so thankful for every word and every deed to support us. And I beg the world to understand Ukraine the same way we try to understand it.
and I beg the world to unite and help in Ukraine. And I plead with you, stand with Ukraine, scream about Ukraine, and support Ukraine. Glory to Ukraine.